It's another Manly Monday. Are you feeling manly this Monday? I am. Uh, no, no joke. Today we're talking about the truth about mansplaining. Uh, the reason I said I'm feeling manly this Monday because part of the research for this was going in and reading uh, articles by marriage counselors and the different ways men interpret communications and the way women interpret communications. And I'm reading this and the, the you know, reading how men interpret things. And I'm like, I am feeling totally called out right now. It, it was describing the way I process things. Very, very, very interesting. And that's why Cthulhu's emote for the week is what you talking about. Because I was like, what do you mean this is men? Uh, all right. Sure. Um, I get accused of being too literal a lot. And so I think this is part of the reason I, I have a different take on mansplaining than most people do. If you're really wedded to the term mansplaining, you're, you're not going to like this video. If you want to hit the dislike button right now, like just go right ahead because you're, you're not going to enjoy what comes or you can or you can just go about your day and just go. I'm going to save myself the headache if you're not going to be persuaded. Right. Everybody else, if if you like this sort of, I'd say nuanced take, but it's just sort of like, I can relate to this one. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Um, part of the whole mansplaining thing is tied up in the way sex typical men versus sex typical women express themselves and communicate things about themselves. Um, and one of the things I find very effective with Leanna Cares is not forcing someone to make the first step regarding emotional vulnerability to sort of build that emotional environment of acceptance by saying, I'm going to try something here. Tell me if I'm right or wrong, you know, um, and then I'll say something. And this is what it feels like like that, right? This is why it bothers you. And I'll either get a yes or a no or work from there. But I'm the one drawing on my own experiences instead of them having to open up. And that that works really, really well with a lot of male clients. But I realized something about myself with that. And it, it, it factors in to the whole mansplaining thing. I don't describe what I do either on It's Not Therapy or through Leanna Cares or Wellness Wednesdays or Manly Mondays as helping. I refer to it as being useful. That is just my frame of reference. And that's why I sort of had an, ah, all right. Something clicked into place there. There are different categories of what gets described as mansplaining. And I think this is why I asked a few different people, how do you define mansplaining? And I got a different definition every single time. The official, <laughs> meaning Googled, uh, definition of mansplaining is the explanation of something by a man, typically to a woman, in a manner regarded as condescending or patronizing. It, it, is, a, it is an idiom. It's a slang term. And cards on the table, I don't tend to use mansplaining unironically. Ooh, double negative. I use mansplaining ironically the majority of the time because uh, condescension is condescension. It doesn't matter who does it. Uh, and there are some people who are just legitimately condescending. They have a very fragile sense of self. Notice I said people, not men. Um, they have a very fragile sense of self. And so they constantly have to puff themselves up. And because they feel like unless they're better than everyone, they're, they're not as good or they're worthless. They're constantly irritating everyone around them with condescension. Uh, some of it's learned behavior. Some of it is legit narcissism. There are just unpleasant people out there. But then there's another subcategory of mansplaining that I think is just a communication disconnect. And I think the best way to sort of overcome 
the frustration on all sides regarding this is to both understand the behavior, but also watch this impulse in yourself, right? Because this is something I recognized in me. I was never validated for being fun or nice or pretty, quite the opposite. I was ugly and fat and weird and not normal. And I didn't speak English because I used big words. But when somebody needed help with schoolwork or when somebody needed somebody to read a manual back in the days, that was useful. Or when somebody had to put something together or fix something or solve a problem, well, then they knew where I was, right? Um, and it a lot of that starts, yes, in school, but it's really compounded in the family. And this is where the unique apparent condescension that some men do more with women than with other men. I don't I don't know how it works with with non-binary people. Uh, non-binary people feel free to volunteer which sort of side you come down with here or or if there's a completely different experience. But there's this time in a little boy's life for people who are socialized male. Um where it's, you know, you're the man of the house when dad's not around and you have to be useful to your mother. And th this is obviously heavily generalized, right? And, and very traditional family structure, but you're useful. You, you do things for mom. You seek approval from mom for being this little man of the house in training, right? And that isn't sitting around and talking about problems it's being it's doing stuff it's carrying stuff it's getting stuff it's being useful right and this translates into this if it gets out of control unhealthy um need to feel needed and the reason i call it unhealthy is because if somebody needs you in an adult relationship, that's not a healthy relationship, that's a codependency. If you need to be needed, you're never wanted. And wanting to be wanted and wanting to be needed are not the same urge. And it expresses itself in different behaviors, right? Um. And this has this huge domino effect, right? Because it's tied into men being more likely to discount their own feelings than women. Because, oh, if you're, you know, if you're overwhelmed by a feeling, well, you're not being productive, you're not being useful, you're, you know, you're not being strong, you're not taking care of business, right? You're not being productive. And so they pack it down, pack it down, pack it down, pack it down, pack it down. I used to be a big feeling packer myself, so um, just eat it, eat it, eat it, you know, eat it. Um, it is a form of needing to feel in control. And that is something that affects gendered socialization. You notice I said gendered socialization and not, you know, sexes. Gendered socialization, it, it's, it's different because... The control that society expects from women is clearly not the same as the control over everything that society communicates to men that is expected of them. This is just gendered socialization. It's true, right? And what this leads to is that sex-typical men have trouble with being wrong for a completely different reason than women do. Sex typical women. I'm not talking about myself. This is the problem with language I have with this stuff. Because every time I say like a man, women, that I feel like I'm lying. Because I'm not, you know. Um, that's why I say gendered socialization, right? The whole thing about being wrong. Um... It's hand it, the the gendered socialization of how to handle it is trained very differently. With women, it's oh you're wrong, 
shut up, just shut up, just stop talking. Because it's an imperfection. You have to be perfect. With with the, the gendered socialization in men, it, it's a slight torque on it. And you see it in sitcoms, right? You have this um, uh, kind of idiotic, goofy male lead in sitcoms. Like Homer Simpson's the shining example of it, right? Um, but he's still the man of the house. He's the one that goes out to work, you know, Marge... The fact that Simpsons has run as long as it has and Marge is still basically a housewife. Okay, Maggie's still a baby. But still, you know, you, you see these things in, in, in sitcoms and Homer's an idiot fuck up, but he's still the man of the house. And that that control, that sort of unconditional fortified acceptance is the is where is is the button that gets hit when men have trouble admitting they're wrong that if they're wrong they're not accepted they're not you know they're not the man around here and 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 this isn't conscious thought this is it's 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 training right it's practically pavlovian is that reference still hold i don't know it, it it's a myth right and it's increasingly as as sort of things become more equivalent, the gulf between what boys are still trained men are supposed to be, you know, those masculine ideals, they're becoming more and more out of sync with what the world truly requires of people in general. And I would actually say that the drift on the the men's side is greater than the drift on the women's side. Uh, it, just because we do sort of have those, you know, Rosie the Riveter, Wonder Woman, um, all, all those strong female characters. One would argue, argue masculinized female characters. And then there's something like, I don't know, Steven Universe. Right on the male side. And and that's not even accurate, right? Because the character's not conforming. You know, um, the the trained ideal for for a lot of men is can is can increasingly out of step with the demands of the world. And this is not the fault of men. Um And this is where we get into the whole mansplaining thing. The people that aren't being like outright condescend condescending, the people who are trying to be useful but come across as condescending, that is seen as an attempt to lord power over someone when what in fact it is is seeking affirmation. Because knowing things, being useful, is what the training indicates men are supposed to do to be men, right? And it's it's not your, you know, they say, oh, the big strong, like, you know, Jason Momoa seems to be the one that everybody mentions now. He's like the ultimate manly man, Um but that's his characters. If you actually read Jason Momoa's interviews in real life now, like he was a real douche when he was younger. But now he talks about like crying and this and that. And, you know, he's supporting Amelia Clark through social media and she was still on Game of Thrones. Like I'm like, there's Jason Momoa's image and then there's Jason Momoa's actual behavior and they are not the same. Um, and I find that interesting. Because then what what happens with the need to be useful that comes across as mansplaining is actually this constant battle with the self, the seeking affirmation. And this is not true in all cases. This is just sort of a case study in, in what happens a lot of the time. Um, 
there's a need for recognition and attention because that's the training of how to the feedback that indicates you are a man you know the in-game currency the health bar if you get recognition and attention that's your user interface that's your feedback loop that indicates you are manning properly right and what that does is it provides external validation to overwhelm this withering self-criticism from that inner critic i talked about last wellness wednesday and that inner critic can come from mom, it can come from dad, it can come from both, it can come from a lot of places. Uh, it can come from school teachers, it's some sort of authority figure back in the day where you sought approval and you didn't get it. And this hits, uh, you know, people, people who are raised as boys. And I don't, I don't just mean trans people for this because, I mean, one of the things with me is my father wanted a boy. I was the oldest, so I think that's where some of my masculinized socialization came from is, is that's what earned me approval and yet didn't because it was this disconnect between what one parent wanted and then what the rest of the world expected, you know parent expected one thing rest of the world expected another thing I couldn't win right uh but so I, I recognize I eventually just stopped seeking approval from people I needed objective objective measurements you know um if I got a good mark I thought at the time it was objective. Little did I know how subjective that was. But it was something I could look at and go, yeah, good results instead of just subjective opinion. And I had to unlearn a lot of that when I got out into the, the working world because so much is subjective. Um, but in many ways, this is a form especially with men, of sort of multi-generational trauma, you know, because we go back to the wars again and, and, and years and years and years where men were absent from the home because of drafts and things like that. And so you get moms that are overwhelmed because they're working and very high maintenance maintaining the home back then um so mom's overwhelmed and checked out you know dad comes back from the front with what they called combat trauma or shell shock back then uh and also oh gee here's this kid who maybe he's never seen before or he's he was baby or she was baby and now toddler even more, you know, and, you know, back then they believed the best thing to do with somebody who had combat trauma, shell shock, PTSD, is just push them back out into the world. Walk it off kind of thing. Of course, we know now that doesn't work because it's like the emotional equivalent of walking on a broken leg, but that's what they thought was best back then. And so you've got this family structure where both parents are checked out for different reasons. And you've got kids who are trying to form their idea of how to be different things in the world through their, from their parents. And, you know, the only time they get approval is when they're useful, when they took something off of mom's plate, especially. You know, go help your mother. All right, mom goes... Oh, and all of a sudden mom's present for a few minutes, right? Because she's temporarily not overwhelmed. And that builds a cycle. That builds a action-reaction cycle that is more instinct than cognitive. And that results in, well, I get positive attention from women by being useful by telling mom where she put something, by explaining something she doesn't know, because also, let's face it, the 
the relationship you have with your mother is unlike the relationship you have with any other person in the world because a lot of moms are like, oh, that's great, even when it's not. Um, you know, and so you get sort of this false sense of what's going to score you points with women because the the more gender segregated somebody's experience is, the less experience they have with the opposite sex, the more the relationship with the mother or the father or the absence of a maternal figure or a paternal figure uh, impacts them because they don't they don't have those other practice runs, right? It's why I think it's really important for kids to have uh, adults of all genders in their lives who aren't their moms, who aren't their dads, to give them a sort of different sense so they have more options about what behavior to model. That's why programs like, you know, Big Brothers and Big Sisters are, are so important. Uh, sometimes I wish it wasn't so... Boys go with big brothers and girls go with big sisters because it's very important to get those uh, presumed opposite gender experiences. And I say presumed because of trans and non-binary kids, right? Um, but to recap a little bit, that condescension that a woman is experiencing is an attempt at seeking validation or an attempt at feeling useful based on learned behavior. So there is no ill intent there. And that matters. That matters so much because of what happens when the, your mansplaining comes up, right? Because if it, it if someone had no intent to condescend uh, or had no intent to do whatever definition of mansplaining they had, they feel falsely accused. That feels unfair. That makes a person who is 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 possibly unwittingly intensely interested in control needs control. It sends them into a shame spiral. It sends them into a... a uh, it, it, it is it is very similar to what happens with with PTS of oh my god everything's spinning out of control catastrophizing freak out overwhelm yeah nobody's listening to each other anymore they're not capable of it because brain is going red alert red alert red alert right uh no one's fault in those scenarios, no one's trying to be mean, trying to do a bad thing. And that's the tragic thing of this subset of mansplaining. Uh, now, the same person won't won't like being told that they're condescending either. They won't necessarily take it well, but at least then it's not wrapped up ex like intimately tied to their gender that if they're approval seeking that way, there there's there's some insecurity there. We all know what happens when you trip on an insecurity. Now, the thing that, because straight men and straight women don't fucking talk to each other as a rule, um, they're not recognizing that the woman's reaction of feeling condescended to, or men, you know, because what I hear from a lot of men is, well, men talk to each other that way. And, and I say, well, do you like it? Well, no. But, you know, there isn't the, um, you don't, you don't call it out. You may find a way to get revenge or you may find a way to avoid that person, but the socialization is not the same. And so there's this, just this big disconnect that is no one's fault. So, you know, what do we do about it? Because, you know, the, the, the woman's side is when, especially when you're in male-dominated spaces, trust me, you're constantly on edge waiting for somebody to talk to you like you're stupid. And the problem is that is a sensitivity because um, there is still, because of how heavily gendered things are, and and the the cues that people are not aware they're giving that are different for boys and and girls, or, or presumed boys and girls, right? Um, 
it's, you know, as somebody who didn't fit, as somebody who naturally gravitated towards He-Man over She-Ra and computers over dolls. And I mean, I like Gem and the Holograms because they did things. They were in a band and it was a rock band, which was cool. It wasn't it wasn't a pop band. It was a rock band. You know, the Misfits were freaking cool, like all the crazy makeup. It wasn't it wasn't traditionally pretty. It said something. It was aggressive, right? Danger hair had a completely different meaning back then. Um, but I gravitated towards that because they did things. It was active and they had a use. Here we go again. But, you know, the weird looks you got when you were a girl interested in computers or interested in boy things. I only had one adult figure ever not be sure about it, but actually check in. And he was my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Bingham. Dude was ex-military, friggin' terrifying, like perfectly close crop beard before that was like, it, it was out of style at the time. It was meticulous, but he was very upright. And this was a guy who, strangely gender egalitarian, because if you got in trouble, it didn't matter if you were male or female, you ran, la you ran laps and did push-ups. He was a pretty awesome teacher. But I was into Dungeons and Dragons. At that time. And he was always like. Cthulhu. Um, and I remember at the end of the, the year. He said suddenly. What do you actually think about this Dungeons and Dragons? And I started babbling about how awesome it was. And he, he, he didn't smile often. But he actually smiled and nodded. It's like okay she actually is into it. I think he was worried that I was just doing it to fit in with the two guys I played with. And, but instead of trying to discourage me, he sort of side-eyed, but let me do it. And then he actually asked, which contextualized the side-eye. When adults don't ask, you don't contextualize the side-eye. And so when you're a woman who's not interested in typical girl things, you know, or, or you're, you're raised as a woman, you're socialized as a woman, and you're not interested in the same things, you are constantly trying to pass just to survive. So when you're, you're caught between these two things of everybody in this space thinks I'm stupid because of what they assume about me, because of what they assume about my gender, and... I actually don't have the same experience, the same amount of experience as other people here, or it's a very different kind of experience because I wasn't able to do it the way the boys did. The world wouldn't let me. I was subtly or not so subtly discouraged from, you know, getting in there and taking a computer apart and learning how to build it and all that stuff. And, and you know, it's, wouldn't, wouldn't you rather do this? Wouldn't you rather take baking? Wouldn't you rather, like, play with this? No. I want to fucking play Missile Command, please. No, I don't give a shit about Strawberry Shortcake, you know? Um, and so when somebody talks down to you, it hits all those buttons, Right. That's what's going on on the other side of the mansplaining thing. Just so you know, and I'm, I'm being kind of fair because I see both sides here. Right. So what do we do about it now that I've sort of done the empathy exercise and hopefully people haven't just rejected it because their own button got hit? You know, th this is a lot of where social ju social justice warrior comes from. You know, that thing I did at Christmas about playing with boys' toys and being ashamed for it. That, that was an unfortunate hand gesture. But uh, that was my own experience. Played up for laughs, of course, right? But, you know, I, I hear it. And, like, you know, poor Solomon is so beat up from all sides. Like, triggered! That's what happens to people. I think that's why the character's been embraced. Triggered! Right? Um, but what do we do? Well, the first step is understanding both sides. What's going on there? Right. Because when you realize the other person's just as uncomfortable as you are, it softens the blow a lot. Right. But. Um, this is where my my it's not therapy slogan comes in. Listen twice before you talk once or if you want the droid code uh, L2T1. 
listen twice before you talk once. And what that basically means is, okay, I am getting a message. Let's check this out before I react. It, it's great in 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 multiple ways for the man in the mansplaining case the speaker make sure you know how to be useful before you try to be useful so something like do you, do you want some help with that or and and this is a, this is actually something i learned through um uh independent living disability stuff don't assume somebody wants the door opened for them don't just touch someone's wheelchair ask them if they would like assistance before you treat them like a child right oh, would you like some help with that would you like me to get the door nine times out of ten they'll say yes but sometimes like no i got it yep let them do it um, even if they seem to not know what they're doing, let them do it because there's a reason. Um, you ever done this before? Um, it's the difference between when I used to do like game events. I'm not kidding. The number of times some guy was like, now to start the game, press start. Oh, oh, you've done this before. Instead of going, let me know when you want me to take you through something or they just start the pitch and they, they wait to see. If you actually need assistance pressing start when it says they're right on the screen, you know, and I, I get why that happened because there were women who came, they were just from the local like CBS affiliate or something like that. They actually had no fucking idea where the start button was because they didn't play games. So, okay, there was an assumption made. In my case, it was wrong. That's why you don't make assumptions. Listen twice before you talk once. Ask a couple questions before you offer information. That's the easiest way to avoid being accused of mansplaining. Do you want help? And try to say help. Try to say want instead of need. Because need can hit a button. You know, no time for that this time. But on the... um. On the receiver side, when you feel like you've been mansplained, I try to give people chances to back off. Uh, and sometimes it comes with your gritted teeth because I'm like, buttons has been pushed. But I'll say something like, why do you think, why, why did you feel the need to tell me that? And a lot of the time it's, oh, I'm just trying to be useful. All right, cool. I got this though. If I do have questions, I will ask you. Or it's like, okay, I don't need help with this, but this thing over here, it it diffuses, right? Now, someone's not required to do that. And most people don't have the highly trained restraint that I do. But those two little steps can uh, really stop the the hurt feelings on all sides and the the clashes on all sides with that subcategory of unintentional mansplaining that is actually just rooted in mommy issues and a need to feel useful and therefore needed and yeah the need to feel needed is not healthy but it's not someone's fault that they had checked out parents that instilled that in them in the first place. And, you know, if we want compassion for ourselves, we have to be compassionate with other people. Really interesting. And again, individual results may vary. This is not true in all cases. So if this is not your story, don't, rah, 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 you're wrong. Because that, that can come across as very condescending. Take it in and recognize this is one subset of experience. If you have a different motivation where you were accused of mansplaining and you had no intent, please share that. You see what I do there? I offer the kind of information that is solicited so it steers people to the right place instead of the unsolicited stuff. Most important thing, did they ask? If not, ask if they need help. Okay, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it and can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. This has been Manly Mondays. Thanks for watching.